I want to talk about the use of Dirac notation in quantum mechanics. The basic ingredient in quantum mechanics is the wave function, and in Dirac notation, we're going to represent that by the state ket psi. We'll literally say ket psi when we talk about that. And so the state ket psi is uh, bigger than just the wave function, is the idea. Another central idea in quantum mechanics is the idea of normalization. So that psi star psi dx integrated from negative infinity to infinity must be 1. Uh, and for us, we're going to use an inner product uh, with Dirac notation. So we're going to write bra psi ket psi. And we're going to define that to be indeed the integral from negative infinity to, to infinity of psi star psi dx. Uh, and of course, for normalized wave functions, that should be 1. Uh, more generally, we'll define the inner product between two wave functions, chi and psi, in a similar way. We'll do the integral chi star psi dx, uh, and that's not necessarily equal to 1. Um, again, we call this chi uh, the bra, and so you could think of it as the integral of chi star um, with uh, an unknown quantity in here that we're going to take an inner product with it. So again, that's going to be our bra to the ket. Another central idea to quantum mechanics that we've seen is the idea of stationary states. And so this is a set of states, or set of uh, functions, psi sub n. Uh, in particular, you can expand any wave function uh, into a set of stationary states, stationary wave functions. And so we're going to do something similar. So we're going to call these a set of basis states, uh, ket psi sub n. And then we'll expand a generic ket in terms of coefficients on the uh, basis states. Uh, a nice thing about stationary states is that they're normalized and orthogonal, so the integral between them gives me delta mn. For us, that means the inner product between psi n and psi m is going to give us delta mn, and we're going to call that orthonormality, or orthonormal states. Um, note that we can use this orthonormal property to extract the c sub m component, which is just the inner product of psi sub m with psi itself. It's kind of a convenient way of uh, extracting those coefficients. Let's talk about uh, the relationship between operators and observables and how we deal with that in Dirac notation. Uh, recall that if we operate with an operator on a wave function, it gives us back some other function of x. Similarly, we'll write h hat operating on ket psi, which gives us some uh, ket chi, by which I mean it's some other new vector, which is not necessarily related to psi. Uh, the expectation value of, say, the Hamiltonian uh, would be the integral psi star h hat psi integrated dx. Uh, for us, that expectation value is going to be sandwiching that operator in between the bra and the ket. You can kind of see the similarity between the notations here. Um, OK, just wanted to point out a bit of notation alert um, on how expectation values sometimes are written. So sometimes this expectation value uh, is written as psi q hat psi, where q is some operator, something maybe h or uh, something else, which is the inner product between psi and q hat psi, is what we mean by that. Um, a related notation uh, is to move the q hat over. We know that we can move it over by taking the Hermitian conjugate of it. And so if we move it over, we write Hermitian conjugate of q on psi in a product with psi. And so what we mean by this um, is that this is the inner product of q dagger psi, q adjoint psi, with psi itself. We take the Hermitian conjugate of the operator itself to move it over. Um, let's talk a little bit about eigenvalues and eigenstates. We could say eigenfunctions if we were dealing with wave functions. So in particular, h hat on psi n, uh, giving me e n psi n. Uh, if I write that in Dirac notation, I'd write h psi n on my ket psi 
is equal to e cat psi. Again, where this e is, just remember it's just a number. Um, it's the eigenvalue of the uh, state psi n. If I take the expectation value of h um, for a given eigenstate, well, recall that uh, I can write that as then the integral negative infinity to infinity of psi star n, e n psi n, which just gives me e n since psi n is normalized. Uh, similarly, in direct notation, I can write it in a similar way. I know that h on psi gives me e, so then this just becomes an inner product between psi n and psi n, which is just 1. So again, it gives me just e n. Just giving you some examples of how this Dirac notation works and how it relates to things that we know. I want to talk about the relationship between observables and what are called Hermitian operators. Uh, so if we have something that we're going to measure, imagine we're going to take a measurement, uh, we might take an expectation value. These measurements um, themselves are going to be represented by some operator. Uh, and let's just call it a general operator Q here. Um, and so in particular, if we want to make a measurement, um, we're going to find the results of, say, an expectation value for that operator. Uh, and so then that would give us a physical observable that we can see. And if it truly is physical, the result of that must be a real number. We don't measure complex numbers, we measure real numbers. So in particular, the expectation value of Q, which again I write as psi Q hat psi, um, is going to be some number, some, say, real number. Let me take the complex conjugate of that. So if I take the complex conjugate of that, uh, complex conjugate here, and so that is going to be, say, the complex conjugate of whatever that number was. Um, but again, if this Q hat operator corresponds to something that's observable, then the expectation value must be real. So Q must be equal to Q star. So I'm just going to write both sides of this out. So Q was this quantity, and then Q star was the quantity I had over here. I just take the star of that. Um, note that uh, if I take the star, that corresponds to switching sides, switching the chi and psi, for instance, here, or switching where I put q and psi. So if I take the star, that really means q hat psi inner product with psi. Uh, but I also know I can move the q hat over with the Hermitian conjugate. So I have Hermitian conjugate q psi inner product with psi. The only way this is going to be true is if q Hermitian conjugate is equal to Q. Uh, and that's a special type of operator. That's a special type of um, thing that satisfies that. We call that a Hermitian operator. Something whose Hermitian conjugate is the operator back itself. Um, and so what we're going to say in the statement that we have is that um, operators of observable quantities, things that we can observe, um, must be Hermitian. Why? Because the expectation value must be real, and for that to be true, the operator must be Hermitian. That's the argument. Let's look at a quick example. Uh, in particular, is the momentum operator p hat Hermitian? So in order to figure this out, let's look up at this relationship. So it'll be Hermitian if these two sides of the equation are equal here. So let's write that out for the momentum operator p hat. So I have inner product of psi, p hat, and psi with the inner product of p hat psi and psi. So let me write out both sides of this explicitly. The left-hand side is the integral of psi star h bar over i d by dx of psi integrate dx. The right-hand side is, again, the integral. And then I have h bar over i d by dx of psi all complex conjugate psi dx. Okay, so I want to make the right-hand side and the left-hand side look the same. So I'm going to integrate by parts. So I get a boundary term on the left term there, which goes to zero. And then I get a term that looks like minus integral of h bar over i. Now the derivative is on psi star, psi dx. 
The right hand side, if I take the complex conjugate there, I get the integral. The complex conjugate gives me a minus sign, so I get minus h bar over i d psi star dx psi dx. And I look at my minus signs and they match, and so these functions are actually the same. Um, so they agree. So that tells me that the momentum operator p hat is indeed Hermitian, which means that it corresponds to physical observables. Uh, and that's good because momentum should be observable, and that's what this is telling us.